Florida is filled with beautiful scenery and diverse wildlife. From bogs to swamps, from rivers to ranches, from lakes to creeks, all the way to the beautiful ocean. Florida plays a significant role for nesting sea turtles. It is claimed to be the largest nesting ground in the world for loggerheads. Leatherbacks can also be seen during sea turtle season. Many people associate Florida with its beaches and theme parks, but there's just one thing that Florida has a higher concentration of more than the rest of the world. Nestled in limestone are Florida's freshwater springs. These liquid bowls of light nourish body, mind, and spirit. 90% of Florida's drinking water stems from the Floridan aquifer. These waters are not only lifelines for us humans, but they nourish many species of wildlife. It is clear to me, if we save our springs, we save the wildlife as well. These places have become my sanctuary. They have introduced me to one of the most charismatic and curious creature, the North American River Otter. Observing them over the last several years has created a certain bond which has fueled my passion to protect their home. This connection was only possible through respecting their space, keeping my distance, reading their behavior, and oftentimes not taking any pictures at all. As a conservation photographer, it is my honor and responsibility to tell their story. It's early morning when I push the kayak carefully into the water. Fog rises over the river. The sun illuminates the majestic cypress trees. As I dip the paddle into the water, I am transported into another world, the world of the otters. Three little heads appear in the distance, bobbing up and down. Suddenly, a tail flips in the air. The crunching is heard again. It's breakfast time in the world of the mustelids. Otters have to eat 15 to 20 percent of their body weight a day to be properly nourished. Half their time is spent hunting due to their high metabolism. This is a very important reason why passive observation should be practiced at all times, more so when a female otter has offspring to care for.
Their food consists mostly of fish, frogs, turtles, and crayfish. Otters are very vocal and use different sounds based upon the situation. They range from chirping to huffing. They also use their scent glands at foraging locations to let others know it already serves as a feeding ground. Otters are excellent swimmers thanks to their powerful tail and webbed feet. They can reach a speed of up to 7 miles per hour. Their long, sensitive whiskers help them to detect prey. Females have one to three pups. The first two months are spent in the den. They are born blind and helpless. They learn to swim after about two months. They stay with their mom for about one year until the next litter is born. Females have delayed implantation of up to 10 months. This enables them to give birth when they feel safe to raise their offspring. Otters have endured more suffering from civilization than most mammals. Relentless slaughter started in the 1500s. From 1821 to 1891, about half a million otters were killed for their pelts. Their suffering did not end there. Water pollution wrapped its deadly hands around the throat of the otter population, when waterways served as stumping grounds for chemicals. Luckily, people began to understand the importance of water protection. In 1972, the Clean Water Act was established, and habitat restoration started to begin. Another attack came along the 20th century, when half of all wetlands in the U.S. were lost and turned into farms and towns. Colorado brought back river otters in 1976 and other states followed. In some states, otters returned for the first time after 50 years. I wish the story could end here on a very happy note, but it seems humans continue to find ways to inflict suffering onto these innocent creatures. We now love them too much and try to turn these wild creatures into pets. Social media has fueled the Asian exotic pet trade, luring potential customers with cute otter babies. The dark secret behind these pictures is mothers are killed by poachers trying to protect their babies from being taken away. They are also bred in horrific environments and known to die from stress. Wild animals belong in the wild, regardless of how cute they appear. We all can help raise awareness, not sharing these images and supporting international organizations to put a stop to this unethical pet trade. I exhale as my finger presses the shutter button. In this very moment, I get to focus on how peaceful it is to observe an otter in the wild. My hope is for all of them to live like this, free and healthy. After all of the suffering we have inflicted onto these animals, they're still here. It is humbling to be accepted by them and to catch glimpses of their lives for a few minutes at a time. It carries a hint of forgiveness towards humans. Photography continues to be my teacher. It has given me courage to speak for the ones that have no voice. When you find your passion, you find your home. It's a place where your soul belongs. You're no longer concerned about what others think, whether it's sunny or raining, whether it's 30 degrees or 90 degrees. Photography has changed my life forever. I hope you discover your passion and you go out into the wild to protect what you love with all that you are. The more we learn, the more we connect. The more we are connected, the more we feel the urge to protect it 